Kyle Morgan here with Blue Bearing Solutions and today we're going to talk about how I approach a threshold in a CQB environment or close quarters battle environment. This video is, is going to, I'm going to touch on you know, the different types of threshold uh, assessments and then the movements uh, up to that threshold and then through the threshold, kind of some of the actions that, that you can have or, or take to make your, your movements uh, more efficient and also allowing yourself to, to increase your processing time. So hope you guys like this video and let us know in the comments and follow us on Patreon for more exclusive content. You know, this is an active, active shooter response, appropriate response course, right? So here to build your confidence that you can make a difference, um, whether you're by yourself or, or force, force multiplying with other people that are converging onto the scene kind of, kind of situation. But one of the big things, you have to be able to get in. If you can't get in, you can't save anyone, right? So uh, I start with the, the approach of a threshold, using the term threshold, door, breach, whatever, I, I say threshold. So for, for, for that, I'm talking about these, like these two doors behind us. So, you know, as I'm, as I'm approaching any threshold, I'm going to try to determine from as far back as I can what type of door this is. What way does this door open? So, because that changes if I give myself enough time before I just get right up on it and then figure it out. I don't have that reaction time, that processing time. So I'm, ha I'm doing this as I'm approaching, right? So from right here where I'm standing, if you guys just, where you're seated, just turn around and look at these two doors. You know, the first thing I'm looking to see is if it's closed or open, right? That should be blatantly obvious to me. And now I call an open door, even if it's just cracked, it's still an open door to me. Um, you still, because you can use that open threshold, that's, an, that's giving you a, a, a look in depth into what's next. So the two things I'm always looking for, well, my, the shooter is the first thing I'm looking for, but as I'm, that's the, at the forefront of everything I'm doing, but getting, as I'm navigating this you know, dynamic environment, I'm, I'm looking to see if, if doors are open or closed. And if they are open, I'm looking in depth from as far back as I can you know, through that room because these rooms, especially with American style and European construction, you know, they're made with you know, nice straight lines for the most part, 90 degree angles and 180 degree walls and things like that. So that tells you a lot about in depth. I can figure out you know, if that door were open or cracked, my approach to get the look to see that hard corner over there tells me what, what type of room this is. At least I can paint, start to paint that picture from as far back as possible. And all that data I'm continuing to gather as I, as, I, as I get to, you know, because once I get to that door in this environment using these hostage rescue techniques, like I'm getting through that door. And then I'm going to take it like a room and then establish another foothold and another foothold and another foothold. Simplify a, cha a chaotic environment. So these two doors being closed, I, I'm looking at that and I see hinges on this door. So when I see hinges, that tells me it is some sort of pool door or outward opening door. It's going to pull back towards me. Um, so I look for hinges and then I'm going to set up on the knob side as I get to that closing in distance for that um, attack in the crack or I, I say set up for the first look, right? So how do I get the first look through this doorway in a closed door situation? And I set up, a, you know, given thinking about that, right? So what that would mean to me is as I'm coming up to this door, I see that it's a closed door. I'm going to go ahead and close the distance. And I'm going to stop short of knob side because that's going to give me the first look as soon as somebody, if I have the ability to have someone come up and open this door for me, it's going to give me the first look into this room. Does that make sense? Now this is, I'm going to talk about if you have someone else with you and then everything else is if, if it's a solo response, there's just some small tweaks you got to do. It's just a little bit more dangerous, more difficult because you can't, because collectively we buy down the risk, you know, with our experience and shooting, moving, and communicating together. So another a term I can use is pull and hold stack right. And I only say that on a closed uh, outward opening door. I don't say that on a push door or, or an inward opening door. So that way if you hear me give commands as far as setup, you know it's a closed door. It's just which side of the door we're we trying to stack on to get, it to, to get the team in efficiently. 
So pull and hold, stack right. So if people were around me, they could, if they had time to come across. If, they're, if they don't, they just split stack it, it's fine. But if there's two of us in this situation, I'm gonna be ready to get that first peak. So just barely crack it for me. So I get this first peak. I see right away, I see that hard corner over there. There's probably about, a, if there's a human sized void that you can't see, then you have, to, you have to determine based on likely, you know, percentages of, of, a, of a, a larger threat to me, I go to the unknown, right? So that, as far as which direction, once I get through this doorway, I'm gonna go towards that higher possibility of a threat. And to me, I can already determine that there is more of a threat to the right, potential, right? Because there, yes, there could be a person right there, but for me, like I'd much rather plate this way. And when I say plate, I want to think about putting your plates in between any of your mates. Anytime we're plugging anything or taking you know, cor hard corners and things like that, digging corners out. So to me, I, as soon as I get that snapshot, I'm like, all right, I'm going right. So as, as I'm coming in, open it the rest of the way. I'm going to step center. When I say step center, oh shit, <laughs> it's a hallway, which is fine. You can... When I say step center, on a closed door, I have to, I need to do this because if I don't and I just go path of least resistance, for one, it's really hard for me to make this button hook turn if I haven't given myself a little bit of space here. And it damn sure is hard for me to, to, to process anything in that snapshot through the center of the room, right? So that's where when I say step center, I don't mean here, right? Because if that, if my muzzle gets sucked past this doorway in any way, I've gone too far. Because as soon as this thing breaks this threshold, this muzzle, I need to be digging that corner out, right? So that's kind of how I set up my death, but it also, so when I step center, it's kind of out and back. So if I need to deal with an immediate threat, I do. And then when I do the corner, I come in like that. So it, it really is, think about how am I gonna get my hips from centered up right here to deal with an immediate threat to then dig this corner out as hard as I can. So this is the harder side for a right-handed right shooter. Uh, the, this right hand button hook. So I'm gonna step here, present out with the buttstock po bo um, pocketed into my shoulder to deal with an immediate threat. And then I can press it down. And then you look at my foot here. I already know I'm going this way. So I'm gonna set up my body to round this corner. And then that, that deep step into the room, how, how deep? Just deep enough to clear the right side of your body in this case. And, not, and your body, an extension of your body is your holster, your equipment. So this is where just getting used to moving around and spatial awareness by yourself and then with a team is huge. So I step in, clear my body, and then I continue down to dig the rest of that corner out. Um, it's gonna be a little easier if I decide to, to step this way. Um, just because I'm a right-handed shooter and that side's gonna That's super important with a closed door. So leave it open real quick. So if this door is open, and I know I want to go in there and I say I'm right here and it's equal distance if I were to travel this way or that way to this door which way would I go this way because it's, it's allowing me to do all the things that I can do from way the fuck back here so all that that center that center snapshot and everything happened from way back there now versus if I ran into the corner this way and now I may have saw a little bit into the room from back there, but I'm closing myself off. And now I might as well, I have to step center again because I'm going to surprise myself. So it's about giving yourself as much processing time as you can. So as I look at this door from back there, I see that there is no hinges. I can see that from that corner over there looking back this way. So now I just need to find the knob. So as I'm coming around, you know, I see that the knob side's here. Yes, this is a really tight crack but I need to back up and use this, the best as, uh, this cover of the threshold the best as possible, but still giving me the first look into the room, which would go ahead and open it a little bit. Boom, that's the first snap I get into the room. It tells me, as I'm looking, I see that wall, that back wall there, and it tells me it runs deep. I can't, there's, there, it, it continues to go, right? So it tells me that this room, yes, there is a space right here that I haven't cleared yet, but I know as I step center, push it the rest of the way, as I step center here, I've now seen from here all the way over, and I see this, this long wall here. So to me, I'm gonna go left because there is a little, bit of, a little bit that I haven't cleared in this corner. Otherwise, I've cleared this whole room myself, all from right here. As, as long as I'm 
seeing this, and, I'm, and I know what to look for kind of thing. So as I step center, I see this. I'm going to press down and then take this corner here. Um, and then if you're the breacher, breacher breaches, man. So a lot of people try to, you know, do all this stuff with their gun up here. Like I, I like to just put my back onto the wall if I'm coming across the breach and look at him. I can keep my gun, my hand on my gun down here, but I need to be able to breach this door. And the progressive breaching, the next step is now maybe need two hands, right, to get this thing open. Or maybe I need to kick, right? So, you know, just know that you're going to have to progressively breach these doors, potentially. Or get your hands on a tool or uh, some sort of other method of entry. And then as far as syncing this up, you know, there's, I, so here's a good example of this. Is, this is why I don't, I don't teach the muzzle wave thing, because I know that as soon as, go ahead and open it, or no, we sync this muzzle wave up, I'm here and open it. And as soon as I come down, like there's gonna be a dude right there or they open the door as soon as I was like starting this movement. And I tell people, if I haven't done this a thousand times, like mm -hmm. from here, brought it to a threat, then I'm not doing it. I want my rifle to be in a position that's consistent. So I know the head nod up, down, I can bring it up quick. And I'm looking right over top of my sights. If you're the lead guy, the guy getting the first look into the room or attacking the crack or whatever. And then as far as manipulation of this firearm, I, I do whatever I need to do to get this thing into a hard corner or digging a corner out as possible. So I will compress it. I'm not shooting it from this position. It's, it's going out to that position. And that's why I utilize my sling with the tricep of my arm and, the, and, the, and my upper body, my back, to lock this in, regardless of the position the rifle is in. I'm able to you know, get it out into that full presentation because that's where it's meant to be fired from. Because I hear that a lot on social media where people are like, oh, you know, if I had the ability to come through this door with the buttstock completely open or, or up into my shoulder, I would. But if most thresholds are about, what, 32 inches or 34, like me, I'm not getting through this threshold. So you're gonna have to either um, sacrifice the gun not being up all the way to get it in the corner, or as I'm stepping in, I'm able to present it right to that corner. So, and I've timed both. It's, it's gonna be faster doing it the way I do it. Whatever you do, just understand why you're doing it. That's all I can say about that. But the gun is designed to be shot from the pocket of your shoulder. Just like if I tell you, if two well-placed shots and move on with these paper targets, because I can't make them fall and die. So two well-placed shots, move on. If, you've, if you threw a shot, follow it up with a well-placed third and move on. And the way I can tell without staring at my placement is if my buttstock is a little loose, I knew I threw that shot. I guarantee you threw it. When we're talking about like surgical shot placement and not harming a hair on that hostage's head or the innocent people in these active shooter environments. Yeah.